Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. What are we going to do in this episode? What we do in every episode it seems, try to get to orbit. And uh, we're really, we really have our backs to it this time because uh, our funds are low, our rockets are relatively expensive now, and uh, yeah, things are going pretty badly. So I'm really hoping for this capable 2. I'm not going to queue up a new launch launcher to be built right now. Uh, if things go badly, we might have to turn to building aircraft pretty soon just to get those contracts done and maybe some funds out of those, uh, maybe some science, but, uh, well, I'm still hopeful here, barely. I mean, I suppose we could brute force the thing, just uh, have a really low mass at the top, not even a guidance unit, and uh, and just get into a really high elliptical orbit. So uh, hope for the best in that case. But right now we're trying a fully guided version. Okay, nice day out on the launch pad. SAS on, throttle up. Now you might wonder why I don't put parachutes on the first stage, considering we do have stage recovery, and that's simply because of mass. And of course, uh, the mass will bring down our delta v to a point where we won't make orbit. So, yep, that's the reason why engine light and launch sorry about the clamps be gone thing that was supposed to prevent us from having those launch clamps chase us but I don't know if it's actually working or not it works in other contexts but we've seen some launch clamp issues this time in this install so I don't know Okay, ethanol burning engine is just fine, but of course that's not our issue. Our issue is with the with the second stage engine, the Vanguard. I don't know, how's smoke screen doing? It's only at 400, it shouldn't be causing so many pauses. Maybe movie time, having all these effects might actually do something, I don't know. I don't think so. I wonder how it's gonna be when we launch larger rockets. Assuming we get to that. Okay, we are past the speed of sound now. Looking pretty good. Less than 30 seconds to first stage separation. If this doesn't work this time, maybe I'll hot stage the Vanguard and see how that works out. Okay, we'll hold it there, set. Okay, the Vanguard is lit. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Phew. Alright, that's one problem. One problem, one worry off my mind. The next worry is whether the nitrous oxide attitude control will work and do enough to stabilize the rocket. So, we've probably got about two more minutes on this stage. No way to see that right now, unfortunately. I think it's uh, something to do with the fairings. Once I release the fairings, it'll uh, be visible. So the next stage will have nitrous oxide attitude control. You'll notice we're not using the AJ-10 this time, and that's because uh, it really wasn't providing enough delta V to justify it being there. This stage feels a little bit underpowered. I just maxed out the burn time, you know, the Vanguard has a certain burn time that it's rated for and I just maxed that out, so. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Then again, the upper stages should be fine on thrust weight ratio. Well, if we can get this into orbit, the next thing we really need is solar panels so that we can actually have a communication satellite up. It's no good having this stuff in orbit without them being able to recharge and provide communication support. Okay, I'm gonna activate the RCS in preparation. Okay, set. And ignition. Well, the RCS is burning. See how well it controls it.
Okay, fairing set. Alright. Yeesh, these Arabies are so loud compared to the other engines, it's just weird. I don't know why they're so loud by comparison. Very strange. Looking pretty good on the nitrous oxide consumption. Looking pretty good. I wouldn't say that we're we've got too much. I wouldn't say that we're short of it either. Okay, set. Oh shoot, this is not right. Okay, and ignition. All right, good. All right, still go for orbit, barely. Well, we might actually have to pitch up a little bit. This is actually the, the coupler, I mean the fairing base there. And that's messing up our ability to read the delta V, I mean not the delta V, the stage delta V and the stage time in particular, the stage time I wanted. Uh, we might not have enough for orbit right now. We are carrying too much nitrous oxide here. Yep, we don't have enough. We only use like a hundred or so units of nitrous oxide. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we need to dump nitrous oxide on the next version. And then we'll be able to do a better job of orbit. Well, while we're here, uh, no, uh, yeah, transmit that. No, and well, there's upper atmosphere now. Well, we'll transmit that. Okay, very good. But this is gonna re-enter. I guess we'll follow it down. We could try and uh, re-enter quote-unquote properly. Let's use the remaining nitrous oxide to turn us around. Okay, that works out. Definitely don't need more than what, uh, well, well, we'll dump at least half of the nitrous oxide. If we cross the, I don't know, maybe we're over ocean finally. Let's try, okay, yeah, we've got some other experiments. Well, actually, that's grassland still weirdly enough. Micrometeorite detector from upper atmosphere we haven't done before. Okay. That one we've done before. That one we've done before. Still grasslands though. So my biome map is off. Definitely. There's there's no grasslands here. And we're not gonna reach Africa which uh, would have given us new biomes. Okay. Communicating through the Bahamas. Very standard sort of situation. What do you think? Maybe we've got water now? I don't know. What's up with this cloudy stuff? We don't actually have clouds. This makes it look like there is land in the middle of the ocean. I guess it's the texture. Well, we have no connection now, so... Oh, it flipped around all on its own. Would not expect it to try and go flat on like this. But it seems to be doing that. I don't know why it's doing it like this. Aerodynamics is weird. Okay, now it's... No, it's just swinging like a pendulum. The two probe cores are the parts that are heating up the most. The Explorer and the uh, Atlas... Uh, well, no, sorry, Able Delta. But it seems that the program really doesn't like to kill probe cores. And certainly that bears out here as they're uh, pretty close to maxing out on their temperature and still not exploding. Oh, everything exploded. Okay. Alright. Uh, oh, looks like it was the avionics package that uh, built the dust first. Okay. 
It looks like we got some funds back. What did we fulfill? Let's see. Vessel complete? Okay, so we got that. Nick. Okay, that died, as expected. That died. That died. Okay, let me just get rid of all the stage. Okay, there's... What's this one? Here. That. Oh, uncrewed speed record. Ah, so we got funds for the speed record that we set. Yeah, we did get to 7,000 this time, but we didn't make orbit. Ha, ah, I should have seen that coming. Okay, that's destroyed. All oh, that's destroyed. Okay, so let's take a good look at this. I want another 100 meters per second, and the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the size of this nitrous oxide tank. I want to keep 781, I think. Maybe some of this one reduced as well. I don't know. That's getting a little bit dodgy there. We could try releasing the fairings earlier. That could have helped. Everything else went pretty nominally. I hesitate to change too much. Mass strength on the fins are pretty... I mean, it's only 0.5 right now. This one's 1. We can reduce that to 0.5. That gives us a little bit more. And also I could adjust the launch profile. This time I realized that even though the Vanguard seems to have a thrust weight ratio of 1 at that point, we really shouldn't flatten out so much. We could probably... Uh, go a little bit shallower during this stage and then not so shallow during the vanguard stage it's pretty close to orbit just not quite there part of that was piloting issues I don't know delta V wise and profile wise it should be able to handle it could slap more boosters on very traditional thing to do uh, these are not RP0 boosters though. I wish they were. They're very good boosters, but... Um, yeah, I think we'll just try a few more of these first. We got the little boost from fulfilling the speed contract. Okay, let me uh, build two of these and then we'll see how that goes. Ultimately, at this point, I think the key is getting the launch profile right. Uh, hold on. Um, once this finishes its warp, I need to see how long we have on the contract, because we're getting... That's nine... Uh, I mean, that's 33 days there. Probably less than 63 days once that gets to the f top slot. But uh, first artificial satellite, 87 days. Alright. Completion only nets us 52,000. But at least, you know, failure is not an option <laughs> in this case. There are cases where failure is an option, but this is not one of them. Shall we? I, I think... Well, I mean, we're not actually aiming high, so I don't see a need to pick up these contracts. And of course we know it's uh, dubious whether we'll actually get them complete. Okay, uh, new Capable 2 on the launch pad, and we will once again try for orbit. Here we go, engine ignition, and launch. Try to make that as quick as possible because we don't want to waste fuel. We're very close to orbit, we're just not quite there, so let's not do anything that might damage our ability to get there. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Flight looks quite nominal. RD-103 working as expected. Okay, getting ready for set. Set. And ignition. Vanguard's ignited. Very good. Oh, uh, we're arrived. We, what, what, what? Oh, crud. We have, uh, we have attitude control issues. I don't know why. Last time we didn't. What is the meaning of this? Man. Why do we suddenly lose attitude control? I 
try and take manual control. Yeah, it's just smart ASS. I can control it just fine. Crap. That's just silliness. Yeah, Smart ASS randomly decides to not control craft. That's not good. Time to apple apps. This is a little bit concerning at this point. Well, let's tilt up even more. There we go. Probability of this getting into orbit is slim to none. I don't know exactly what to do about Smart ASS not being able to hold that. I guess we'll just switch to SAS on set. I guess that makes sense. We can do that. Anyway, let's see how the nitrous oxide holds up. Whether we have enough, whether we need to dump some more. Okay, fairings. Okay. I was expecting it to be a little bit higher for fairing release, but obviously we know what happened there. Set. And ignition. And attitude control. Attitude control? Aww. Oh. I should have uh, ignited the RCS ahead of time. This is what happens when you don't. Yeah, these thrusters aren't enough to stop this kind of spin. Nope, it's just completely off. Alright. Alright, I've had enough of the noise. And then it sometimes does this sort of thing, I don't understand. Okay. Uh, let's abandon this. Well, I'm just going to queue up another one of these. We'll try it again with uh, switching to SAS before stage 2 ignition. And we'll try that out. We've already got one building. Uh, I'm not feeling all that great right now. So here's the build list. And let's warp to complete and uh, get that capable underway. It's going to be a matter of time rather than funds, I think, at the end. I have no idea what the next contract will entail after we get the first artificial satellite. If that costs a lot of funds to build a rocket that can do that, then we're going to be in trouble. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS on. Get Smart ASS ready, even though it betrayed us last time. And let us go. Well, at least the RD-103 is reliable, but of course that's because it doesn't have a test flight configuration. Oh well. It's also got pretty low specific impulse. Thrust varies very interestingly, actually. And you look at the thrust fluctuating, I, I, that's very interesting. Didn't realize they simulated that sort of thing. Well, we're past the speed of sound again, but passing the speed of sound has not been the trouble for this rocket. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, good ignition. Okay, a little bit of wiggly, but nothing like what we had last time. I'll just manually steer it a bit. Let's see, can... SAS handle it this time? We'll find out soon. Oh shoot, oh shoot. Uh, you got it? Okay, hold it right there. If you could. I think it adds a little bit of trouble with the verniers too. Not great the way the prograde vector is deviating here. 
Time to lap lapses. Doesn't look like too much of a problem, though. I'll separate fairings at 80 kilometers. Okay. Alright, all looks good. Fairings clear. 15 seconds. 3 seconds, RCS on. Set. And ignition. Okay, we are all right. Not great, but all right. We're running out of nitrous oxide on this stage. Set. And ignition. Okay, we have ignition. We still... We're still go for orbit. Using nitrous oxide a little bit quickly here. Well now I could use... Uh, I could uh, hope that I would use the nitrous oxide a little bit faster now. Because of course that's mass that we don't need at the very end. Uh, it's tough to say what's going to happen here. Numbers are flashing by too quickly for me to see whether we have enough for orbit, actually. Uh, we might not. No, we don't. I don't think so. Oh, crap. Okay. Can we sort of... Hmm. Can we sort of orient sideways and have the... Hold on. <laughs> this is a silly idea. Oh, no. We ran out of nitrous oxide anyway. Just on that turn. <sighs> just end up a little bit short each time. This time the launch worked fine. Can't say we had too much nitrous oxide either. Maybe we just need a little more, more, a little bit more delta V on some stage or another. Oh, we can't get any more science here. Oh, oh, we can. It looks like. Could have sworn we've done that before, but I'm not gonna argue. We won't have communication. Well, we might have communication over Africa, but yeah, I'm not gonna follow this down. Okay, well, I'm getting a little bit desperate here, and so I've added boosters, as you might expect. And, of course, they forced us to upgrade the launch pad, even though the rocket was under 40 tons, so I might as well build a rocket that's over 40 tons. Um, we're not at the limit of the avionics. I tried to make one that was right at the limit of the avionics, but it turned out that, uh, well, I've chosen the AJ-10s as my, my booster engines, even though they're upper stage engines, because uh, taking a look at it, their sea level thrust, uh, uh, sea level ISP, I mean, is 240. Their thrust isn't great. Uh, it's only 29 kilonewtons, but they're pretty cheap. And when you take a look at it, uh, it's, first of all, sea level ISP of 240 is much better than the 216 that we get out of the RD-103. In fact, its vacuum ISP is 244. Uh, its main attraction is the thrust. But let's say you put four of these AJ-10s together, well, you get a max thrust of about 120. Uh, compared to the max thrust of this Vanguard, which is 122 at sea level, but the Vanguard costs 100, uh, uh, 650, whereas four of these cost 600. So uh, that's sort of the balance of it. Uh, the, they only have a little booster, and that's because uh, we, well, we don't want to carry the extra weight. They don't produce that much extra thrust, after all. We just want extra delta V. And so since we don't want to overburden this. Uh, we did get the thrust weight ratio up a little bit, uh, so that's positive. And they're burning for a minute and 10 seconds, and the center stack burns for 25 seconds more before separation. 
It's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more expensive, obviously. Um, but it does gives, give us about 200 meters per second more delta V, and that's delta V that we could desperately need. Also, it gives us a better kick start at the beginning. So that's my hope. Uh, now, the AJ-10s are subject to flight uh, test flight, so we could have a failure. We'll have to see about that. But uh, let's try this version out. Um, we're getting pretty close to the wire here, so uh, this... Well, we could hope that nothing goes wrong with this, but I've added complication, and, you know, complication always makes for, for interesting events. Okay, so, yep, let us build... Let's build one of these, oops, not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's build one of these. Contract-wise, by the way, we have 37 days left, just for you to know. And this rocket finishes in 25 days, and somebody's probably screaming at me to check my upgrades. And the answer is, I have negative one points available. Probably means many bad things. I don't know how I got negative one points available. Uh, yeah. Things, things, things are going badly, let's just put it that way. Alright, well, it'll be... I don't even know if we're gonna complete the capable... Shall we? You know, let's move up the capable... Wow, 30, 38 days, really? Um, that's 37 days. Um, even if I bought another point, it wouldn't actually give me another point, would it? Because I'm at negative one. Yeah, I even thought of doing that. That's... Well, I might fail career mode for the first time ever at this rate. Okay, well, um, while we can't do the capable 3, we'll have to do the capable 2. Maybe we could make the capable 3 cheaper somehow. Uh, so that it finishes faster. Let's edit it. You know, we do have TWR problems on the Vanguard stage. Maybe shortening that up a little bit would help, actually. And also make things cheaper. Let's see. Hold on, let's uh, make sure. Our delta V is 9,768. I'm only shaving minutes off of the burn time rather than hours. Not the burn time, build time. Will hurt our delta V less if we shrink this stage. It's not. It's not decreasing the time to build. If we only put two boosters, by the way, uh, of course we won't have that much thrust weight ratio. But maybe it would make it substantially cheaper. I mean, substantially quicker. Time is money now. Well, now it's just not uh, showing my delta V properly here, I don't think. We can't have three minutes worth of burn time. By the way, I dumped the utilization because... Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, because we need a wide tank. We could probably make it smaller. I mean, we could make these things really tiny. They have it's The, the fuel is very dense. That'll make things a little bit better. Seems to have hurt our delta V quite a lot, though. That doesn't give us much at all. Now we're at uh, 9,600. Well, at least the burn time is nice, but these little tiny things. This is so weird. Maybe we should... Uh, let's increase the base stage up a little bit. Okay, well, that's a weird thing. But it gets us within 38 days, at least. Well, let's save the edits. Okay, so moving the capable three up, 36 days. It's really our last shot. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS on. Got a lot to remember during this one. A lot of little quirks about this rocket. Now with boosters. All right, here we go, ignition. And one engine failed. Ah, oh, crap.
What was the time before? <laughs> well, that one had uh, 478 seconds before failure. Mm. Hold on. Well, well, I mean, we can't reignite that one anyway. Alright, folks. It looks like we're doomed. Well, at least we got the funds back for recovering the thing. But, so what happens? We are going to fail this. Is there any way I can mitigate a 225,000 fun loss? Nope. No way we were ready to send a Kerbal to space. I don't think we have a capsule even. Well, unless you consider the conic cockpit a capsule. Wonder if there's anything that would bar me from using it as one. This is probably not the time to check though. Okay, so yeah, well, we'll uh Good thing I didn't put four of those, probably more likely to fail. Well, I can try and build another one of these. They can take away our funds, but they can't take away the rockets that are building, right? Maybe? I think. Anyway, let's warp to complete that capable too. Well, zero funds now. At least we didn't go into negative territory. But we've pretty much failed. Our credibility is has taken a hit. Let's see if we can get a contract for this now. No, nobody wants to trust us. So we could launch this, but we're not going to satisfy a contract with it. Well, heck, uh, yeah. I, I want to launch the Capable 3 again first, and then we'll launch the Capable 2 if the engines don't light properly. Okay, well, let's see if this works. Throttle, throttle up, SAS on. Get this ready. Ignition and launch. Well, it started. Okay, we are definitely past the speed of sound. Less than 15 seconds left on the boosters. Okay, booster set. Okay, booster set is clean. We continue. Okay, switching from Smart ASS to SAS. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, Vanguard is ignited safely. And it looks like Smart ASS has it. Continuing pretty nicely here. We've got quite a bit of margin on the Delta V still. And actually time to apoapsis is not dropping as precipitously as it has in previous times with this stage. Still a lot of wiggling. The the verniers plus the gimbling on this engine are maybe I should just stop the engine from gimbling since we have verniers. Tough to say though. After all it's had handling control problems before. I'll separate the fairings at 80 kilometers as before. Set. Okay, they are cleanly off. Going a little bit better than before, but I'm not going to let my guard down, if you will. Activating the RCS. Set and ignition. Okay, looks good so far. Set and ignition. Okay. 
Alright, approaching Apoapsis. We'll pass it a little bit, but that's nominal. Didn't use much nitrous oxide this time around. Wonder why that is. Quite a big difference, actually. Okay, we've made orbit. 289 by 152. And that is acceptable. Orbit has been done without an orbital contract. No contract to help us. We're, we're doomed. Okay, well, let me take RCS off. We can at least do some science, I suppose. See when we pick up communication on this side. Okay, here we go. Through South Africa. And let's see. Nope, grasslands again. Oh, mountains now. Okay, mountains. Probably means. Nope, that says grasslands. I'm not entirely sure. Well, uh, the mountains must have been a lucky fluke. Okay. Um, does Mechjeb have a biome readout? Well. Nope, I don't have a uh, biome there. Well, I don't have a configure, we'll just leave it a mystery. Anyway, uh, it's in orbit. I'll just leave it here, I don't feel like doing all the science right now. And, uh, well, let's take a quick look at the contract screen just in case something new popped up. Oh, okay, well, uh, first artificial satellite is once again here. We got an advance for it. Since we declared bankruptcy, I guess they can't nick us any further, so, uh, alright. Let's pick that up. I think we know what rocket to use for that. Science data from space around Earth. Yeah, I think we can do that quickly enough. Okay, let's let's get that science done. And I guess crisis averted, maybe? Now, just to be clear, from my point of view, I've still failed career mode for the first time, like, ever. So... So, yeah, but... But, at least in this case, it means... It doesn't mean that I'm going to in the series prematurely. Let's see if we can get deserts. Australia's full of deserts, right? Nope, still grasslands. Or highlands. Can we get highlands? No. Okay, surface biome. Let's get surface info up then. Grasslands. Okay, let's keep going. Something is clearly wrong with... Oh wait, tropics. Okay, so uh, that's different. But yeah, s something is weird about the biomes. Oh, now it's grassland. Oh, water! We haven't seen much water on a planet that's mostly water. But we're back on grasslands again. Grasslands, really? Maybe grasslands and water are like... reversed. Somehow. I think grasslands and water must be reversed, because... It's the only way this makes sense. Anyway, we, we fulfilled the contract, right? Yeah, we uh, transmitted science data from space around Earth. Okay. Alright, so I won't hunt for anything more. We've lost connection anyway. So, uh, well, again, new life to the space agency. Everything went wrong because of all sorts of problems. Alright, anyway, I'll, I won't belabor it. So, with that, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.